Hi, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the value of computing geometry. You can see what I'm looking at right here. I've gone through the trouble of digitizing parking lots, creating data from sidewalks using a GPS, and digitizing buildings. You can see my sidewalks are here in red, represented as red lines. My buildings are represented as green polygons, and you can see my parking is represented in gray here. You can see the imagery that I've superimposed underneath of it from the North Carolina One map. I have a tutorial on how to connect to that. For now, I'm going to turn it off because rendering it is makes GIS kind of run a little bit slowly. In this particular tutorial, you can see my map right here. I want to calculate the area of the buildings, the area of the parking lots, and the length of the sidewalks. And we, we can do this using the Calculate Geometry tool, which is fairly easy to use. When we work with census data, we typically use survey data or anything that we might collect. And we know how time and resource intensive of a process that is. You know, we get a POP 2000 or POP 2010 for a particular polygon, and we need to essentially take that as fact. In some cases, we can create our own data. In other cases, we can create our own geometry. So for something right here, if we have our parking lot here, instead of me going out and actually calculating the actual acreage using kind of time resource of you know, survey methods or whatever, I can use this GIS data to actually calculate the area in square feet or acres or whatever we're going to look at here. I can calculate the centroid. I can calculate the length of these sidewalks that surround North Carolina Central University. So in this particular instance, we're going to talk about how we can do that. Okay. When we're looking at this, in the bottom right-hand corner, we can see everything looks to be in state plane uh, feet. Okay. In some cases, if we're working with uh, latitude, longitude, our geographic coordinate system, we might run into some problems here. But for now, what I'm going to do is going to turn all of these off here. These are my buildings on campus here. And if I right mouse click, open up my buildings here, you can see the 57 or so buildings that I have here. This is kind of a fluid process. You know, what's the actual, you know, what is an actual building? We have new buildings being built on campus, so forth and so on. And for now, I have a length and an area. And I, pick, I don't really know what these units are. So what I'm going to do is create a brand new column in which I calculate the units myself. So I can right mouse click here, up in my context menu here, and add a field. I'm going to add a field called SQ feet. Okay? And these are added from a personal geo database, so I don't have to worry about precision. Uh, in this case, I have short integer, long integer. In this case, I'm just going to call it a double. So I'm going to calculate something called square feet. In addition, I'm also going to calculate perimeter, which is the actual distance around it. Add field. I'm going to call this perimeter. I'm not I'm going to calculate this perimeter in, say, meters. And also make this a double, too. Okay. So these are different ways that I can calculate it. Now, in previous, uh, previous incarnations of my tutorials, if I right mouse click, I can do a field calculator, calculator, where essentially I derive a new field based on existing fields. We do this in Excel all the time with the equal sign. Instead, I'm going to look at calculate geometry. And the first thing I'm going to do is calculate under property. I'm going to calculate area. For a polygon, I can calculate the area, the perimeter, or the x centroid or the y centroid. Okay? In some cases with polygons, we have something called features to point in the data management tools that allows us to do that, to create a brand new point from polygons based on the centroid. Here, I can actually create the x and y values for this. Okay. Under coordinate system, let's use the existing coordinate system. And the reason why I stress this here, that we work in state plane, is if you work with geographic coordinate systems, it might run into some issues because we're working with essentially unit lists, latitudes, and longitudes, which are in degrees. And we try to convert these to things like square feet, acres, hectares, square meters, square miles, or whatever we're trying to do. And the conversion here isn't that easy. In some cases, when I've done this previously, I would have to set my data frame to be in some sort of projected coordinate system, like state plane feet or meters or you know UTM or anything like that, instead of having the, the standard latitude longitude if you bring your data into latitude and longitude. Okay, so I just want to kind of put that out there for you because if it doesn't allow you to calculate area, you might want to go back and change the coordinate system for your layers here. And that's pretty easy to right mouse click on that change coordinate system. 
Okay. So here, since I'm just calculating square feet, I'm going to click OK. And literally, it's going to go and calculate the square feet. Okay. I can sort ascending, sort descending. You can see over here, if I highlight the highest square footage, you can see this is the Mary Towns Bright Complex over on the western part of campus, over where our department is. Okay. Also, if I went and did a survey of the data and I had the number of floors, I knew the square feet, I can start to get the entire surface area. So something like Eagles Landing, if I look up something like Eagles Landing here, which I think is right here. So if I get the total square feet of Eagles Landing, which is 35,713, it's six floors. 35,713 times 6, so I can, I can get an idea as to not only what we call footprints right here, but also our vertical space, our total square footage for that building. Okay, And there's caveats too. You know, not all buildings going to have the exact same square footage. So if we're looking at things like asset management or, or building footprints or square areas or how much we're going to dedicate to, you know, cleaning supplies or something like that, we can really get some good benefits or good um, estimates from something like this. The other thing that I can do, I can right mouse click. And like I said before, I can calculate the perimeter in meters, right mouse click, field calculator, set an area. I'm going to calculate perimeter instead of feet. These are the units that I have in feet. You notice how when I changed from area to perimeter, and the same will happen for, say, X and Y, where it gives me my X coordinate in feet, meters, nautical miles, decimal degrees. If I really wanted to, I can do that there. Okay, perimeter, well, like I said before, I was going to calculate in meters. So I can sort descending. And you can see 636 meters for the Walker Phys Ed building. Second highest is actually Chidley. Okay, so this has the highest perimeter over here. Okay, Chidley Hall up off of Alston Street. So these are some of the things that I can do with the Calculate Geometry. I can do the same thing with parking. Okay? So if I look at my parking right here, I want to find the total number of acres. ACRES, double. If I right mouse click on my calculate geometry, I can calculate the area in acres. So I can see what parking lots have the highest acreage, the lowest acreage. Okay. So we've got 2.37 for this particular parking lot over near the bookstore. We've got 2.31 for another one. Where's the other 2.31? Okay, over near the student union. Okay, that's a big challenge on campus trying to find enough space for parking, especially between the hours of about 9 and 2. So we can get an idea as to how much area we actually have. And like I said before, I can right mouse click, I can look at statistics, and you can see on campus I have about 16.4 total acres of parking lot. We did a previous exercise where we have about 110 acres on campus. So you can see a little bit more than, you know, a lot more than 10% of campus is actually dedicated just to parking lots. Last thing that we'll look at is length. Okay, so I have my sidewalks right here. I want to compute the actual length of sidewalk. Okay, if we're trying to buy salt for shoveling or anything like that in a winter emergency, I can, under my table options once again, Click on Add Field, and I'm going to take, I'm going to call it Length in Meters. I'm going to make this a double. And once again, I spelled Length wrong, sorry. Right here, I can go to Calculate Geometry, Length. It could be in feet, centimeters, inches, meters. Well, like I said before, calculate this in meters. Since these sidewalks aren't independent of each other, like our like our parking lots or our buildings, probably trying to figure out the longest and the shortest sidewalk probably isn't, you know, isn't especially useful. But trying to calculate, the, you know, maybe the total length of sidewalk that campus might be responsible for might be something that's useful. So we can see we've got a sum of about 17,802 meters, which is more than 10 miles worth of sidewalk in and around campus. 
and then we can add all of these back. So in conclusion, the Calculate Geometry Rule is especially useful when we try to calculate real-world areas. The last thing I want to stress is that these data, these areas, and these lengths are only going to be good as the data on which they're based. Okay, so if I zoom into a parking lot right here, and you haven't digitized it correctly, or you digitized it at a poor scale, then the calculation for those acres or square feet or whatever you calculated for is also going to be off. Okay, so we use the term garbage in, garbage out. Okay, it's having a little bit of trouble zooming here because we've got a 32 terabyte image we're trying to, you know, show here. That's this uh, NC1 map that we're looking at right here. I probably shouldn't have zoomed in. Okay, so keep in mind you need to digitize on a very high scale, probably one to a few hundred to one to a thousand, if you want to get high quality calculations.